So you've got yourself a sales team and you're not all that thrilled with their production. You've looked at their bad attitudes. They don't show up to work on time or early and they don't dress all that well. They don't end up staying very late and they don't work as hard as you thought that they would when they said, I'll do whatever it takes to work here. I'm going to be successful. I promise you're never going to regret hiring me. And then you instantly regret hiring them because, well, they're a new hire who just got infected with the toxicity and the negativity from one of the people that are already on your team with a bad attitude. You may be asking to yourself frequently, where are the good ones at? Where do I find great salespeople? And I am going to answer that for you right now. If you're looking for great salespeople, my first tip for you would be to stop looking for great salespeople. Sure, there's gonna be people out there that are successful at other companies making a bunch of money, but that doesn't necessarily mean by any measure that they're gonna experience the same success at your organization. After all, you've got different products, different services, different customers, different culture, different energy, different coworkers, different management, and a lot of other variables that are gonna impact that person's ability to be successful in where they are at. So, tip number two is take that focus and attention that you have on finding great salespeople and instead put it on finding great people or at least people that have attributes and characteristics of great people. One of those things is gonna be somebody that's tolerant to taking some type of risk or somebody that's willing to sacrifice something significant to them. Could be the city that they were raised in, could be the city that they live in right now, could be the country that they live in right now. Maybe they're willing to take a risk and jump on a plane and travel all the way to you and move to where your location is. Maybe they're willing to give up a relationship in order to get there. Maybe they're willing to give up a career and what they know so that they can jump into sales or be at your organization. There's gonna be something that you're gonna be wanting to look for, something significant that somebody else is willing to give up for the opportunity to work for you. And one of the main reasons why you're gonna be looking for this is that people that give up something significant or meaningful to them oftentimes have to replace that thing that was significant or meaningful to them with something else. It could be being the top dog at your sales company. It could be making a bunch more money. It could be acquiring or becoming successful. It could be a numerous amount of different things that are important to somebody, but trust me, somebody that's already giving up something to get to the next level is no doubt gonna put in the work required to get to that next level and to fill in that void or that gap that they created by coming and working for you. Make sense? Now the third piece right here is gonna be a little bit complex because it has something to do with your internal training processes. Of course, when you onboard a new hire, you have to teach them about the product, the service, pricing, competitors, all the tools and technology in your business, so on and so forth, so that they can actually do their job. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they're approaching their job in an effective and efficient manner. What I mean by that is many of you guys, your sales training consists of, say, a one-pager with your five, your seven, your nine, your 10-step sales process on it. And then you tell your people on that one-pager to go home, study it, and then show up to work and then you never really go over it, and you never really cover any of the processes within the process. And that is what most businesses are missing in developing the skill that their people need in order to become great. At the end of the day, just because one of your people knows how to maybe hold a conversation doesn't necessarily mean that they know how to cold call somebody effectively and generate interest required to schedule the appointment. Just because somebody schedules an appointment doesn't mean that they necessarily know what to do next when that appointment doesn't actually show. Just because somebody knows about your product doesn't mean that they're pitching it most effectively and driving home the value that they need to in order to turn that prospect into a customer. What I'm saying is you need a bullet point process-driven approach to the processes within your sales process. Your people need to know what to do next. If they don't, they're not gonna do it very well. Tom Brady doesn't snap the ball and then figure out what he's going to do. He knows everything that's going to take place before it even takes place on the field. That's called being a professional. But real quick, let's say that you do have some phenomenal sales training. I would be willing to bet that none of you, for the most part, are doing this frequently and consistently enough with your team to actually develop the skill required of your team to reach the top. Most of you are gonna do something maybe once a week, once a month, maybe once a quarter, maybe send your team to a seminar or a workshop or a class or an event that they can go and fall asleep at and you just kinda keep on writing checks and kinda cross your fingers hoping for an ROI. That doesn't work because it's not done every single day. Think about it. It's like getting good at golf. I suck at golf. 
If I wanted to get good at golf, I know that it would require my time and attention on a daily basis. I'd have to get probably a trainer or a coach or somebody that knows more about my swing than I do. And then of course I'd have to show up day in and day out to put in those reps, to get that muscle memory and understand how to hit the ball better. Now, if you're in sales and you want to become great at negotiating or closing or handling objections, cold calling, managing inbound leads, so on and so forth, that's going to be something that you're going to want to put some attention on every single day so that you can develop those skills, be aware of what you weren't aware of and implement and improve. Know what I'm saying? Now, the last little piece of this video, I didn't really want to record because it didn't want to hurt your feelings. It is 2021. And of course, it seems to me that everybody's gotten pretty soft these days, but I've got to keep it real and I've got to give you the truth. If you do the things that I've talked about in this video, I can almost guarantee that you'll have more successful, higher producing, more revenue salespeople that are actually happy and don't need to be managed as much. Now, if you end up losing those people or you still fail to attract or find great salespeople in your organization, well, I'll be the first one to tell you it's not the people. It's not your pricing. It's not your products. It's not your market. It's not the economy. It's not your competitors. It's none of those things. It's you. You're the problem because you are going to attract and hold on to who you already are. If you're not putting in the work, if you're not letting go of something significant like time or money or an investment in their training, guess what? These great people aren't going to stick around. Great people need to be developed. They need to be trained and they need to be pushed into that next level. And if you're not doing that in your own life or in your own career, then you're probably not going to do it for those people. And those people are going to require that because they do want to get to the next level more badly than you do. So the bottom line is this, train your people, develop their skill, give up something significant or meaningful to you, like some of the revenue sitting in your business bank account, invest in their training, invest in tools and technology that allow them to get the job done better. Do the things that you know you should be doing for your people. And then your people, well, they'll do great things for you. I can guarantee you that. If you found some value in this video, definitely drop a comment below so that I can interact with you and make sure to share and subscribe to this channel so that you get more of this good content. And also, if any one of these little challenges or problems that I mentioned in this video hit a little bit too close to home, hit the link in the description notes below and jump on a call with me. I'd love to help you for free. It's something that I do with hundreds of businesses and something that I do very well. And I would encourage you to do so because I do care about you and I am willing to give up some of my time so that your team can get to that next level. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for stopping by the channel.